I want to especially thank my uh, colleagues, uh, Congressman David Wu and uh, Congressman Phil Hare, for uh, joining with us today. Pleased to also be here with uh, Dr. Robin Shapiro, the chair of the uh, NDN's Globalization Initiative. Noah Brown, the president and CEO of the Association of Community College Trustees. And David Bain, the vice president of the American Association for Community Colleges. Uh, we're here today to announce a uh, piece of legislation that uh, President Obama much heralded during the uh, campaign. And rightfully so. Anytime we begin to talk about this economy and the need for economic recovery, it depends on training of our workforce to make their to make sure that they're able to technologically handle the demands of globalization and to compete in a global economy. Uh, by expanding the mission of community colleges, uh, we're fortunate that community colleges so well serve this nation and where they're placed all across the region, whether it's in cities, suburbs, or in rural areas, close to 1,200 community colleges exist. In my own state of Connecticut, in talking to uh, our community colleges there, just the, in, up in Winstead, we have our community college has 1,200 computers uh, that could be availed to people uh, during uh, the evenings and on Saturdays. Uh, this is a very uh, straightforward, uh, simplistic, uh, but important notion of making sure that if you're going to have a competent, highly trained and successful workforce that they need to adopt uh, to the changes that have taken place in this global economy and to have the accessibility that our community colleges provide and the opportunity to go there and receive the kind of training uh, that they need to be able to appropriately then access the work market is precisely what we need in this kind of an economy. So I want to thank uh, uh, Dr. Shapiro for coming up with the, uh, with the concept and the idea, and I want to thank our uh, community colleges for joining with us and supporting us. And with that, let me turn it over to uh, Dr. Robert Shapiro. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Congressman Larson. This is, this is, as the Congressman says, a simple idea. Uh, the fact is that um, almost all the wage gains achieved in the United States over the last 10 years have been achieved by that share of the workforce that is most adept at working with information technologies and working in <coughs> workplaces that are dense with those technologies. The rest of American workers over the last six or seven years have seen their wages stagnate uh, in a period of very strong growth. This is a historic development, and one of the critical reasons is that their skill sets are out of sync with the requirements of high productivity in a digital global economy. Uh, we have already the investment. The sunk investment is already there to provide access to these skills uh, uh, through the computer labs that in over 1,200 community colleges across the country. We need to lower the barrier to zero for the half or nearly half of the American workforce who don't have effective IT skills by opening these labs for free training in the evenings and, and the weekends for any American who wants to, who walks in and says, I want to improve my skills. Um, in 10 years, there won't be one job in America, or not many more than one job in America, whether it's a truck driver or a clerk at a <laughs> supermarket or any other job we can imagine that won't have to interact with information technologies. Um, we owe it to the American workforce to provide access to the skills to succeed for all Americans. And I'm very grateful to Congressman Larson who's showing leadership in this as he as he has in so many other issues in promoting this legislation. Thank you. Back down. Noah Brown, the president. Well, let me also uh, thank Dr. Shapiro, Congressman Larson, Congressman Hare for this legislation. Uh, we're very excited to be here to support this. 
has been said, America's community colleges, we believe, are engines of prosperity in this country. And we are in every community in this country, and we're there to serve. We have a mission to serve. We are owned by our communities. And this legislation will enable these colleges to serve their communities uh, even better, particularly in these challenging economic times. The concept of allowing more people into community colleges to take advantage of the technological resources and to learn cutting edge skills to make them uh, employable or re-employable is absolutely critical, especially now. So we're very excited about this and we look forward uh, to working with uh, Congressman Larson and others here in the Congress to get this legislation passed as quickly as possible. Thank you. Now we have Jim Hermes, who's here on behalf of David Bain at the uh, American Association of Community Colleges. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, AACC, uh, along with our uh, sister organization, ACCT, um, we represent uh, the country's approximately 1,200 community colleges, AACC. Uh, our principal constituents are the presidents of those colleges. Uh, on behalf of AACC, I want to thank Congressman Larson for introducing the Community College Technology Access Act. Uh, we enthusiastically endorse this legislation. Now, this, le this legislation supports our institutions in a key aspect uh, of our institutions that is often overlooked. Obviously, our institutions are places to go where people can get a college education and receive occupational training. However, our institutions are also hubs of the communities in many other ways. Computer access and IT skill training are two key services that our institutions provide their communities, and this bill is going to better help them fulfill that role. Funding through this program will help our institutions expand both the quantity and the quality of our computer access and IT skill training. So thanks again to Congressman Larson for his leadership on this issue. Congressman O'Hare, we look forward to working with them both to pass this important piece of legislation. It's been my great honor to uh, introduce someone in the United States Congress who understands the importance and significance of community colleges, and especially as they impact not only our workforce but our veterans, and so many of whom returning need also to require uh, skills uh, while they were absent in a way and in the service of their country. Uh, please welcome Phil Hare from Illinois. I want to thank my uh, good friend and the leader of our caucus, Congressman Larson, for introducing this excellent piece of legislation. Uh, I serve on the House Community College Caucus, and ensuring that we have a well-trained workforce is one of the single greatest keys to an economic recovery. In a global economy, this means providing workers with the skills they need to succeed in a high-tech environment. As was mentioned before, so many of these jobs that we're talking about today, tomorrow, and in the future, uh, the, the folks are going to have to have IT, and, and this is a, an excellent way of doing it. Much of the manufacturing base in my West Central Illinois district has disappeared over the last several years. Factories have closed, and workers have been left without their jobs, health care, and their pensions. These workers that have spent their entire careers on assembly lines and cutting room floors, not email and Facebook. Encouraging community colleges to offer these workers free computer training makes excellent and perfect sense. The skills they learn can help them find a new and even more secure job. I've had several community colleges in my district that I know of would love to participate in this program, and I have thousands of constituents that could benefit as a result of it. Again, Congressman Larson, thank you for introducing this bill. I hope, hope it could be uh, brought up for a vote very soon, and I look forward to its passage and the President's signature and uh, being able to have people have the opportunity to learn a new skill. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. Any questions? We're very community colleges, I, I teach kind of a fairly broad um, umbrella, if you will. I know community colleges are pretty geared toward uh, the economies of the local communities. Well, the skills uh, be geared toward those economies as well. I guess what I'm saying is the community colleges are looking at what specific skills are needed in the local economy apply those to the IT skills that are in their respective communities. Well, I think the community colleges are especially depending upon the region and uh, whether they're rural, suburban, or inner city are the most capable of 
determined that and i have every bit of confidence given their administration and their support from the association that they'll be able to adapt to the needs that will be required of the citizens that need to be retrained within this economy and uh... look this is uh... education in a uh... in a knowledge-based economy which we're in uh... it's so vitally important that the emphasis be on retraining and that there be this connection back again to community colleges which i believe uh... uh has been said already uh... provide more uh, to a community than just learning a skill they are actually the hub of a community they become the pulse and it's where small businesses can turn to it's where uh... not-for-profits can turn to and hopefully get the kind of training uh, that's needed to uh... Uh, keep American citizens employed. I don't know if anyone else wants to. Well, I would, I would just echo what the congressman has said. I mean, our experience is that these colleges are very adaptive, understanding and anticipating what the needs are in particular service regions, and that's really their hallmark: is the flexibility, the innovation. And I would fully expect that uh, should this bill become law and be funded that they will continue to focus on the specific needs of the people within their communities, regardless of what they may be, but they'll always be tied to the economic imperatives of their service areas. And in fact, the people we represent, the boards, will see to it that that is done. Yep. Any other questions? Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, before, uh, before we... Our final do, uh, the, uh, David Wu, unfortunately, was chairing a subcommittee, or fortunately, was working on behalf of the American public, uh, chairing a subcommittee and just got here. Dr. Wu. Thank you very much, John. You know, timing is everything. Uh, timing is absolutely everything. I wanted to be here to support my good friend, John Larson, who has been a leader in technology and a leader in education and come up with this very sound concept, which will improve the roles that community colleges already play in helping our workforce and our people. As chair of the community college, a co-chair of the community college caucus, and, and I did just break away from a uh, science technology subcommittee hearing uh, to, uh, to come here. Uh, we need to give a boost to education and, and access and close, close the digital divide. Community colleges have played a leading role in training people for the workforce of the future and this bill will uh, contribute greatly to that not just for community college students but to open up computer labs to the general public this will allow members of the general public to cross the digital divide get access to job skills job hunting and other very important things to be taken care of in this very difficult economy uh, furthermore access to technologic expertise in that a trained individual will be there will allow folks to step up and, and truly climb up the ladder of computer literacy. And finally, the grant funds available under this uh, proposed legislation will let computer labs and community colleges improve their services and service all. Uh, I want again to uh, thank John for his signal contribution to community colleges closing the digital divide and allowing people to find better and more jobs in this very difficult economic environment. And uh, thank you again for asking a few extra questions so that uh, my timing could be perfect. Thank you.